Hello curious people, today we have another exciting video for you. Today we will review an SDRG controls project for a company which built systems that processed and dipped boards into various chemicals. They requested that we build a control system that would handle and dip circuit boards for etching and coating. They were pleased with the software and also wanted us to make the HMI man machine interface screens. We would just do the programming for the PLC and HMI. While the controls were developed, they were building the tanks and hardware to process the boards. Come along with us while we walk you through the process. We helped them to update the reliability and versatility of the manufacturing line. The customer told us the machine he was building was a series of tanks with an overhead trolley which would carry plates from one tank to another. An overhead gantry would move to a tank and lower its pick device under the piece to be picked up. It would then pick up the product and move it to the next tank. Then the gantry would lower and move out from under the unit it had dropped off. The movement along the row of tanks from one to another was via measurements from a laser range instrument. In this picture, you can see something similar to what we envisioned. This was just our vision since we had not seen the actual process. We requested more definitive information. The customer comes back with more details. Shown here is the actual tank layout he is going to use. Now we see we are getting somewhere. Now we see the gantry moves right and left to be positioned above the proper tank. The tanks have heaters and oscillators to manage the fluid. We find that the tank's processes are controlled by controls provided by others, but we must send a command to them to stop the oscillator when it is in the proper position to raise and lower the boards. This leads to getting other information. Then we develop an I.O. list together and request some form of sequence of operations. We receive the input-output list from the customer. After further discussion the I.O. was revised to the one shown here. This resulted in a simple list but required significant programming. The inputs and outputs would control all of the field devices, but the variable number of steps used in any order made for a complex program. As a result, thorough testing was required to catch small mistakes in coding and any the various possible operational sequences. For example, the gantry speed was a single analog output but it used an output curve which included controlling the acceleration at start and deceleration at the stop point. For large movements this was easy, but on small movements we had to overcome the stick pin at the start and slow down to ensure proper stopping at the end point. This was challenging on small movements. Likewise, even though the laser was one input, it accounted for almost 30 potential desired locations. We are now moving together. We start with the customer's PLC sequence and develop a detailed sequence of operations. We had always planned a PLC for controls and an HMI or man-machine interface for user interaction and control. The HMI would have screens to set up the physical locations of equipment on the machine. It would also store and retrieve recipes. The recipes would determine the order of tank usage. Some tanks may not be used in some processes. A hidden screen would be set up to identify where items were picked up and dropped off. Locations would identify the distances for the laser rangefinder. It would also list the distance location of each one of the tanks. Now we were at the point where a group of technicians could start developing the HMI screens. Shown here is the basic operations screen on the HMI. This screen shows the current status of the system. In this display, the system is waiting on a piece in tank 7. The colored bar represents the time remaining in tank 7. As time advances the colored bar gets smaller and smaller. When the bar no longer has color in it and there is just a black outline, the dwell timer is complete. The material in the tank still has to go through a drip and rinse. When it is finished with these steps, the box goes away and the piece moves to the next tank. This screen also shows many other status features. Note the upper right part of the screen. 
The number 7025 indicates the current position of the gantry. This is the position of the gantry as determined by the laser distance measurement. This number does not correspond to any specific units of measure. The hidden page to be shown later shows the position of various components in the system. Before and after the symbols of the rows of tanks are two indicators. The green and red bars on the top left indicate where boards are ready to be picked up. Red indicates a board is ready and green indicates the space is open for a new board. The same is true on the next line on the right. It shows where boards are waiting to be removed. If there are no boards ready to be picked up, the system stops. Likewise, the system will stop operating if there is no location to drop off a completed board. Lastly, the bottom row shows operational details. The left two items show the current recipe number and the operating mode. The next two buttons are action buttons which call up another recipe and change screens. Generally these are used when the system is not running. The last box on the far right shows status and interlocks. If there is a problem the text will change to red so that the fault can be identified. This is where formulas are entered or modified. There is a screen like this for each recipe and for each tank within that recipe. This format allows the tanks to be operated in any order within a recipe. The next tank entry defines which tank will follow this one when all of its functions have been completed. Note, there is a setup screen like this for each of the 25 tanks. All recipe information for all 25 tanks is contained within the control system. Note, the number of dunk cycles can be from 0 to 3 times. Zero dunks means the process will skip the dunking process. Thank you for watching another one of SDRG Controls projects. We hope you enjoyed the journey. We appreciate your suggestions and comments. Please give a thumbs up to like the video and please subscribe to be notified when a new video is released.